Hello everybody, it's Foxy speaking, and uh, yes, yes, so this video, this is a video talking about many flashbackable memories from, uh, from 2022. As we get started, well I mean it's already pretty much begun now, sorry, cats. This year of 2023, as we know, it's pretty much begun now. Um, I thought, even though we're in a reasonably early start of 2023, despite New Year's Day having gone several, having passed already several days ago, I thought I'd break down in this video talking about, <coughs> speaking of, very many flashbackable memories from 2022. <sighs> if I may point out. Um, 2022, I must admit, has certainly been a very full year, if I may say so. A very full, and if I also may say, a happy year too. A full and happy year 2022 has been, is how I'd like to describe it. Quite a lot had happened to a lot of events in the free time, or whenever there's nothing of, uh, of other stuff and all that. A lot of, a plenty of events for 2022. Um, from time to time, though, not completely regularly, as I wouldn't do it completely regularly. Some interesting trips out. And, um, obviously Hove Park Miniature Railway and all that. And sometimes David and Sally Abel, well Dave and Sally Abel, and, uh, and, all, and all the rest of that. Um, yeah, I would say so. But it's certainly been quite a full year, I must say. And especially sometimes of visiting Seaford, as well as Seaford Branch Line. I think once or twice I visited it earlier this year, either once or twice. And Ramsgate a couple of times, well Kent about three times. One time to visit my dear grandmother Anne. And another time to uh, to attend a special 80th birthday, and another time Ramsgate was to attend my auntie's birthday. So Ramsgate for three important reasons earned it back in 2022, but the number of events I attended for 20 during 2022 was more events I could have ever attended in a whole year period. Because until about 2021, I mean, obviously when we had Covid, obviously there was no events and all that, but until about 2021, excluding Hope Park Miniature Railway, because that happens more than once every single year, uh, as we all know it, the only annual event I would attend until about 2021 was the Worthing Bus Rally. Which was from about 2018 onwards, although I did go to Worthing Bus Rally once before 2018. Years before 2018 that was. And I had been to Eastbourne Bus Rally before, but I don't know if it goes now. Never mind. But um, aside from that, it was Worthing Bus Rally I would attend, the only annual event I would attend once a year. But until about 2021, that all changed. After meeting and encountering, who is now, I'd say, my best friend, David Scott. And since encountering David Scott, I have now had the pleasure of knowing not just one annual event, but several annual events now. Because it was 25th of July 2021, even I'm talking about 2022. Worthing Bus Rally, two weeks later, it was the uh, Tinker's Park. Uh, 
trying to think of what else next after that. Um, trying to exclude other things, but then there was the Special Bing Call and Veteran Car Run. Those were the only annual events I attended in 2021, but 2022, however, the annual events I attended, which I'm very, very much intending on attending for in 2023, was the Eastbourne Magnificent Motors event, which took place on the very last weekend of April, but obviously then it had the first day of May, which 30th of April to 1st of May 2022, Eastbourne Magnificent Motors, then the next week after that, on the 8th of May 2022, was the uh, London to Brighton Veteran Car Run. after that in terms of events that is events wise but we'll talk about other things later on oh I yeah mean, I mean, I, the next week it was the London to Brighton mini run but I obviously I missed that I missed it I didn't attend it in the end which I'm planning on attending it in 2023 and it was the Lawton Cuckoo Spring Fair, Tinker's Park, and then events wise, Broil. Uh, after Broil, Parham Park, Worthing Bus Running, Tinker's Park, Hellingley Festival of Transport. I missed the autumn. Uh, Norton Rani in the autumn version of it, but um, I'm planning on attending the autumn Norton Rani in 2023. Um, and the Sprout and Winkle event, obviously, and the London to Brighton Veteran Car Run. And then another one before that. Uh, which ones am I missing before that? Um, it was the Lewis um, Ukraine Appeal event for raising money for the poor people of Ukraine, going all the trouble they're going through and all that, which is just intolerable and completely awful. And David obviously was in a lot of disgust over it, as well as I, as well as the whole world is. Um, Lewis Bus Station Ukraine Appeal event and in which I gave a five pound donation when I attended the event and uh, after that and an annual event in terms of that it was about three weeks later the LT Eastbourne East Grins, no it was East Grinstead Bus Rally also known as the LT Country Bus Rally so this year I attended about 20 annual events which was in relation to namely transport and heritage vintage events which don't usually which they don't take place during the winter but they do however take place during the spring summer and in the very latter and in the very early to almost latter part of the autumn seasonal periods every single year but not every weekend if I may point out and there was some I'd missed I'd never heard of before, but I think David may have forgotten to remind me of them. But since seeing his video of them, I now know of them. But I don't know if there's going to be another um, Ukraine Appeal event in terms of bus, Ukraine Appeal bus charity event. I don't know if there's going to be another one, since there already was one, which was... which which myself and Dave, well David heard of it rather unexpectedly 
but then spoke to me about it and after he spoke to me about it I'm like okay I'm just going to go without hesitation and we both attended David did not attend the East Grinstead bus rally but that was okay he wasn't completely aware of that one but both myself and David did however we did attend the Eastbourne Magnificent Motors event together. We did attend the London to Brighton HCVS event in Madeira Drive in Brighton, but I think we went at different times that day, so we, we didn't see each other, but we did both attend the event nonetheless. David did attend the, the London to Brighton mini run in spite of my absence, but hopefully it will be both of us together at the London to Brighton mini run. We were both together at uh, Norton Rally and the Broyle and Parham Park, but with the Parham Park event, there were both, it was not, it was not, I wouldn't say 100% on 100% pleasant terms when we were there. The other events, it was 100% pleasant terms, almost certainly, but with the Parham Park event, it was not 100% pleasant terms and there were bones to pick. But it was 100% my fault, if I may admit to it. And why I say it's 100% my fault was because David was not terribly happy with me. Why he was not happy with me, I will say why. It was because of that Daphne sequel I, I had made back in July of 2022. It was the first make of the 220th Daphne sequel before I took it down and had to and subsequently remake because the first make of it just involved an excessive amount well the first amount was was just an excessively rude amount of swearing and also a lot of crudity and vulgarity in the uh, the first make of the 220th Daphne sequel and uh, and I was like oh hello David when I saw him at Fire and Park normally he'd be hello but he'd usually be actually not just happy but show a little bit of excitement as well whenever I'm there but this time he was like uh, oh oh uh, hello and we shook hands but it was a fairly weak handshake and it was a fairly not so much faint but it was a hello but I could see something was wrong and I was like I was like oh dear I said I know I know you're not terribly happy with me because did you because you saw the video didn't you despite not receiving his comment David was like I did see the video yes and he said, it was a lot cruder this time, wasn't it? I said, well, did you hear? I said, was it because that was swearing? He said, well, it was not just swearing, but there was crudeness as well. And then he said, this time it went on. He said, and this time it went on for about ten minutes. All the swearing and crudeness. And I was like, I'm just hoping on planet Earth Kim did not watch this. And David was like, ah, oh, I'm sorry, Foxy, but yes, Kim has sadly watched it. I was like, oh, no. I said, she's angry with me, isn't she? And she said, she's like, yes, she's very angry with you. She said, not just angry, but she's extremely upset. And she said she could not watch the whole video because of how much swearing and crude language there was in the video. And actually, I did get complaints on that video, actually, the first make, before I remade it. Some, one, it was Mike Cross, I think, who said it. He said, good, it's always lovely seeing videos of your Daphne. But, Foxy, did we really have to hear all that obscene language? That was what he said. I was like, oh dear, I think I've done something rather stupid, haven't I? But when there was... There was bone, but when there was the bone picking face to face with David and myself, I really did see the error of what I'd done in the video. I was, I was only, I was, I wasn't swearing to be bad. I was only swearing a lot in that first make before having taken it down. 
I was only swearing just to make the video funny and not to be a rude advert or a crude advert or a vulgar advert or anything. I was certainly not intending to go down that path. You know. And obviously with this, when I did the second remake I could see we were... But when we left the Power and Park event we were left on slightly better and more even terms although there was still some bone picking but not as much when we first said hello face to face when attending Power and Park that was. And there wasn't as much interaction as there was when we would generally attend events normally, myself and David, or whenever we're having, say, an advent an adventurous outing, whether it's when it's whether it's outside of a vintage or classic car event. You know, we're, normally there'd be a lot of interaction and excitement and endorsement, but there was seldom any of that at Power and Park. But never mind, I would understand why, as it was mainly my fault, as it was 100% my fault for the cause of that. But, the, but things got better when I did, when I took down the first make of the 220th Daphne sequel, and uh, after I took it down, I did a remake where there was this time not. Um, not um, expressing far too much um, swearing and all that. And David was like, "This is it's a it's a pleasure to listen to you without the bad language and indeed the crudity." And then he said, "People much prefer." And then he reminded me, saying. People, foxy people, much prefer wit and humour rather than the excessive use of swear and crude language. And Kim did comment on it as well. Lovely Kim, that is. Although she can sometimes be an angry Cruella de Vil. No offence, Kim, if you're watching. Uh, but, and also she was an angry Cruella de Vil when, when she was so shocked by the language and the crudity of the first 220th Daphne sequel and um, and she said when I did the remake the second make where well, there was no swearing this time but maybe a little bit of silly wit and humor but no swearing and all that she was like this is a she was like oh a huge improvement Foxy I think people got the wrong impression with you when you were using bad language I think that was what she said. Well, at least I think so, but I'm sorry if I was com terribly wrong. And I think Heather also made a comment and she said, I am shocked to, dis to hear you discussing being vulgar, which I know is not like me. I reminded Heather it was not like me to be vulgar or swear a lot in a video. And David even re reassured her, reminding her what I had reminded her almost a saying it might pretty much echoing my exact words. And then I obviously at the same time began reiterating my apologies. And David was like, it's okay now. So I said, let's get back to normal and no more bone picking over this scandal. So then the scandal passed. And when we met at the Worthing Bus Rally, 100% even terms and excitement when we met. Same with the Tinker's Park and all that. The only events David did not attend was... Well, he attended Tinker's Park on the 4th of June, but didn't on the 5th, which was the day I attended. Um, but we were both at Tinker's Park on the 7th of August, 2022. But, um... However... David was sadly not present at the uh, Hellingley Festival of Transport as he was not terribly well, but that's all right. Oh, but I'm missing out another event. It was Worthing Minis by the Sea event, which both David and myself found out about at Parham Park. And um, after finding out about it, we were both interested in it. But David didn't attend that event, but it was okay. 
as he had things to do and sort out at home, but that was all right. I attended nonetheless, and there were certainly a lot of wonderful many cars parked up in a little park thingy just near Worthing Seafront, not too far from the Worthing Pier, and not too far where Worthing Bus Rally was generally set. There were, and it was certainly a very nice occasion, the Worthing Minis by the Sea event. Lots of wonderful mini cars parked up on the grass surface of mini cars from very many different eras. I think predominantly 1960s or 1950s mini cars, at least I think so. But uh, if I'm wrong, I am sorry, but I would, I would think most of them were predominantly from the 1960s, I would imagine because they were all very old mini cars and not um, and they were not the newer make of mini cars they were all old fashioned mini cars the minis at the event although I had to be careful sitting in the cab because I was a little because it was a little bit shocked because I, I think I was merely too tall to fit in well, I did fit in, but I was just careful how I sat in a mini's, uh, inside, in the driver's seat of the mini car, you know. I was just careful as to not hit my head too hard. And there was obviously a couple who owned a mini car. Both were a bit tall, were well, actually, both of whom were taller than myself. And I was like, oof, I was like, well, be careful how you get in the mini car and because they were quite tall in height that I think one or both of them had to move the, the seat back so that they wouldn't hit their heads badly too badly or hit their heads when if they've clambered into the mini car in the person, front passenger seat and the driver's seat you know I think if you're much shorter than say my height for example I think you'd be able you'd find you could fit into a mini car with um, hardly any trouble. I think it's dependent on one's height. But I certainly be recommend being careful getting into a mini into a mini car's driver's seat if you're standing over five foot eight inch height, which is the height I stand at, as I may have said before. But people like Tommy Gardner would have to be especially careful if, if say, he were to go to a mini mini event or wanting to sit in into the car into the driver's seat of a mini car from say built in say the 1960s for example because I think he did say he was much taller than I was I think he said he stood at about six foot two because I remembered he he watched one of a video when I was talking about my previous weight from years ago and he said Foxy, you're only five foot eight. I'm six foot two. That was what Tommy Gardner said. <laughs> so sorry, Tommy, if you're watching. Well, I mean, I'm, I think nothing would stop you going to the Worthing Minis by the Sea event when the 2023 event of Worthing Minis by the Sea event takes place. I think nothing would stop you going to it. But I think if you wanted to sit in a driver's seat of the Mini's car, you'd probably have to be careful how you get in, given your tall height. But I think the, the owner of the Mini car, who was taller than I was, I don't think he was six foot two. I think he was about six foot at the very most. But the wife was, but his wife obviously was obviously taller than my height. Not his height, but a bit taller than I was, I would say. Cannot remember exactly, but definitely at least an inch taller than five foot eight, I would say. Yeah. No, but it was a nice event, the, the Worthing Minis by the Sea event, despite David's absence. It was a wonderful event. And Worthing Bus Rally of 2022 was absolutely successful and wonderful. Parham Park was wonderful despite the bone picking between myself and David. The Broil Vintage event, as David went to the 2021 Broil Vintage event, I only found out about it in February of 2022 and both David and myself subsequently attended the Broil event 
of 2022. But I could not go on the 25th of June because I had celebrated my special birthday that day. But I could go on the Sunday, however. So, that, which was alright. Don't know if I'm going to go to the Royal 2023 event. I would very, very much like to, but I just don't know if, I, if I'll be going yet. That's all. Never mind. Um, but yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, where was I? No, but the other events, Eastbourne Magnificent Motors, I know I mentioned it earlier on, I was so pleased to have attended it for the first time. As well as the London to Brighton HCVS event, which certainly had brilliant, excellent weather for the day of the event when it took place. The weather was absolutely perfect. Well, fairly cold, but it was sun. there was the right amount of sunshine, which really did suit the event very, very well, I have to say, these, the sunny weather. But even though I was wearing a coat, well, a jacket and hat that day, um, the weather was thankfully not raining, which was what mattered the most, as if I may say. Um, and LT Country Bus Rally was certainly a successful, wonderful event in East Grinstead. And I'm certainly looking forward to going to it, to the East, East Grinstead LT Country Bus Rally for its 2023 running session. Even one of my friends Ainsley, he attended it as well, the East Grinstead LT Country Bus Rally. And the Lewis um, Ukraine Appeal uh, bus event certainly went very well. Obviously it was an important event, and seeing how important it was, the response of the number of people attending was certainly profound, if I may say. It was most definitely profound. Yes. Uh, and uh, the Hellingley Festival of Transport event, well, Tinker's Park, absolutely wonderful, fun, very vintage and fun as usual, and most wonderful as usual, Tinker's Park. Hellingley Festival of Transport was absolutely wonderful, as it was the first time I'd went, when I went on the 27th and 28th of August 2022, that was. And, um, obviously, um, the Hastings, um, Sprout and Winkle event was certainly wonderful. It was a successful and brilliant event, almost certainly. And the London to Brighton Veteran Car Run, despite the heavy rainfall at the start of the event, was just wonderful. And that was the last event I attended for 2022, that was. And I was certainly very happy to have went, and I, it was really an innate delight going to these events, it really was. And uh, obviously Hove Park Miniature Railway ran pretty much, aside from only two running days that could not go ahead for the 2022 Hove Park Miniature Railway's running season, it was just the mo it was absolutely wonderful, and I was certainly enjoying the Hove Park Miniature Railway both stupidly and idiotically when going with with a lot of fun when the open public running days of Hove Park Miniature Railway took place. And it was always a pleasure seeing the volunteers at the Hove Park Miniature Railway, especially Jack, as he's always, what do I owe the pleasure to Jack, as well as Derek and all the other HP volunteers, you know. And I also attended Eastbourne Miniature Steam Railway sometimes. I mean, I attended it about four times throughout 2022. On the, in April, 11th of April 2022, 11th of June 2022, 
26th of July 2022 and 30th of October 2022 was when I attended. Uh, yes. Um, four times Eastbourne Miniature Steam Railway. Um, once Lewis Castle. Uh, where was I? Oh dear. Twice Hastings Miniature Steam Railway. I attended it twice. Um, did the Seaford branch line, I think, um, either once or twice in 2022, and I'm certainly intending on exploring it again in 2023. As well as a few good Seaford visits, as I do very, very much like Seaford as well as an occasional visit to Rottingdean from time to time earlier this year in 20... earlier in 2022 before the 2023 proceedings, that is. Uh, sorry, I'm a little... my brain's a little slow. My absolute sincere apologies. And I attended Withal Transport Museum as I was intending to attend having previously attended in 2021 and went again in 2022. And I'm definitely going to intending on going there again in 2023, but it's best to go ideally once a year to Withal Transport Museum, because why that is, because of how far Withal Transport Museum is and how late I've came back home after attending Withal Transport Museum. And Withall is um, not too far from Birmingham, which is a very, very long way from the Brighton and Hove region. What next after that? Do 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 do. Um, I attended Pool earlier this year, Pool that's in Dorset, pretty little town, and I even had a very nice little lunch in Pool when I went. As well as watching a few trains in Pool, I even took, explored the town, had some lunch there. It was certainly worthwhile going to Pool back in April of 2022, that was. <laughs> Where was I? Do, 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 do. <sighs> oh, oh yes, yes, man gaps. I turned it man gaps twice in uh, twenty throughout twenty twenty two on the fifth of March twenty twenty two and twenty seventh of October twenty twenty two. And I'm intending on attending Man Gaps Railway Museum, hopefully three times in 2023. Hopefully, if I can. <laughs> um. Oh, sorry, Amy. Um. Sorry, sorry about that. Uh, the Man Gaps. We thought about a load of other things. Obviously covered Hove Park, Winter Railway, and Eastbourne, Miniature State Railway. Uh, oh my goodness, where, where was I? I did take a big trip to Worcester in Worcestershire back in May of 2022, and that was certainly worthwhile. Well, there was because the, I did a video featuring a Worcester Shrub Hill Railway Station. And that's certainly a nice little station, and I would definitely love to go there again. That was the first time I'd been to Worcester Shrub Hill. And uh, after Worcester Shrub Hill, well, obviously when going back, I went back via Reading and then via Gatwick Airport. And I even saw Reading Railway Station for the first time also that time, which was back in May of 2022. And it was a very, very nice time exploring Worcester. I even went to 
a few nice shops in Worcester. That's Worcester Shrub Hill, that is. And I also attend, had a very nice meal out in, Worc in Worcester Shrub Hill at a Greek restaurant. Which was certainly lovely. And also there was the Hastings Diesel that was running. That was at Red Hill on the, I think, the 7th of May 2022. And I saw that again for the first time in almost three years. And there was the YouTuber, um, the Red Enthusiast, Rexy. I think he also went to see it as well. And I think, Rexy, if you're watching, you did see me, but we did not say hello to each other face to face. I mean, it's very, I'm certainly all the more elated and happy that you saw me at Red Hill Railway Station when seeing the Hastings Diesel, Rexy, but I'm just so sorry we did not say hello to each other. But hopefully if we see each other again another time, the Hastings Diesel, it, should it be seen at Red Hill Railway Station, hopefully we'll say hello to each other this time. Yes, but I was just, I was, I did regret not being able to say hello, hello to, um, to Rexy. I really did regret that. Oh, never, but never mind. Um, of course, but one, of course, uh, there were very many wonderful trips I took in uh, throughout 2022, and as well as a few very nice, um, friendly meetups with um, Shahiba in 2022. It was February. Uh, what was next after February? February, August, and August. In August and October, we I had a, four friendly outings with Shahiba, which was very nice and certainly worthwhile. It's always a pleasure see, meeting up with Shahiba whenever I get the chance. Um, doo -doo -doo. Oh, yes, yes. And as well as a minor trip to um, Stenning, no, Bramber that was in early January of 2023 and a trip and a little showroom trip and all that and, and a couple of Midhurst trips and I'm definitely intending on doing a Midhurst trip again in 2023 as well as an Arundel trip Poss quite possibly but we'll, see, we'll wait and see um, in 2023 um, so just try not to miss anything out, but my apologies for thinking very, very slowly. You know, the brain gets a little bit more tired as oneself gets older. Sadly, there's a harsh reality of life. Uh, you know. And as well as a nice other few things but yes yes I would say those are the most wonderful hi highlighting moments of um highlighting moments and flashbackable memories of um 2022 a lot of outings well certainly more outings compared I'd say more outings compared to 2021 and attending more events about 20 odd events far more than I events that I've ever attended before, annual events, excluding Hove Park Miniature Railway and Eastbourne Miniature Steam Railway. Far, far more events compared to certainly 2021, most definitely. So yes, it was, one could describe, I mean, I would certainly describe 2022 for personally myself as a very full and happy year. But one of the biggest things that happened 
as all of us know, in 2022 was our late Her Majesty the Queen's 70th um, reign as Queen, her, her Platinum Jubilee, in celebration of reigning of uh, being of 70 years as queen 70 years for reigning monarch beating a record if if the world as the world would know it almost certainly the platinum jubilee 70 years of being queen but then a short while after that she sadly died as we know it's, those were two very very big things that happened earlier it, throughout at one point in 2022 was our Her late Her Majesty the Queen's Platinum Jubilee celebrations and the saddening death of our late Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II. And then, um, and then obviously the rising and then the rise of our new monarch, King Charles III. And 20, May of 2023 marks the profound and special coronation for our His Majesty King Charles the Third, as we know. So those were certainly two very big things that happened in um, 2022. And but there were, but I may possibly it might be slightly irrelevant to what I've shared, what's happened in previous years before in a video sometime after the New Year has happened. One of the funny things I did in 2022 was um, watching uh, 101 and 102 Dalmatians, the live action ones that was. <coughs> and oh my goodness, I thoroughly enjoyed them. Having watched them before as a little boy, I decided to watch them again. And because I'd not seen them for a very long time when watching them again. And it was they, and I found them wonderful. I mean, the only thing that was not the only thing that's not wonderful in 101 and 102 Dalmatians is that dreaded Cruella de Vil, as we know it. Thank goodness she is not real. But if she were real, that dreaded Cruella de Vil would certainly would certainly not be going anywhere near my beautiful Daphne and Nixie. But another one of the special highlights, for 2022 highlighting moments that is, was Daphne and Nixie's first birthdays, as Daphne and Nixie both celebrated their first birthdays earlier in 2022. As Daphne turned one back in March of 2022, and Nixie turned one back in April of 2022. And another highlight was my auntie's birthday, as I may have mentioned before, for 2022. So yes, yes. But I have to say, I think that's pretty much it. And in terms of things that happened for me personally, obviously 2022 is different for every single individual over the comprised length and breadth of our world, as well as up and down the length and breadth of the United Kingdom. And I think I might miss out, be missing out one thing, a Glind trip and, um, Drus and a Drusilla's trip. Some other highlights for 2022, highlighting moments of 2022. Indeed so. Well, and I think that's about it, showing what had happened for me personally in 2022, the highlighting the most wonderful highlighting flashbackable memories of 2022 before the 2023 proceedings. Yes, as well as some wonderful adventures with David. Special thanks to David, my best friend, and I think everybody is highly aware of how close we are in terms of our friendship despite our severe bone picking we had at the Par and Park event, but luckily we made up, made up the bone picking after a very short time. And also, what I do want to thank from tw throughout the course of 2022 is your friendly sincerity. And one of the most wonderful things from 2022 was hearing from 
three wonderful new people, well three extraordinary men. Those three extraordinary men uh, were, uh, were Tommy Gardner, Peter Marquette and Ian Postlethwaite. Just some three absolutely extraordinary men. And I'm very, very much hoping to meet up with those three men. And definitely, and I would certainly be taking David along with me for whenever I'm, I meet up with those three extraordinary men. I've even, I have once had a dream where it was not just Tommy, David, Peter and Ian who I'd met up with, but I, alongside Tommy, alongside David, Tommy, Thomas, Peter and Ian, it was about um, six of us, so it would be six men really, five, six men, meeting up, meeting up all together, and that was certainly a wonderful daydream I had earlier in 2023. I really do want to thank each and every one of you for 2023, as it's certainly been a full and happy, a and it was certainly quite a full year of a lot happening, Despite the two very, despite the very sad memory of 2022 and losing our late Her Majesty the Queen, um, I do want to thank each and every one of you for largely your friendly comments of courteous sincerity from the very many of you I'd been hearing from, especially if it's from people like David or the lovely Heather from Canada, lovely Maggie from Canada also, or Sarah from. United States of America or friendly and the friendly and hospitable lady Florence from I think quite likely United States of America and everybody else especially if it's Jeff Reedman or Mike Cross and all that my absolute utter thanks to each and every one of you, including the other people, the other wonderful people, special people, well, profoundly wonderful, special friends, who are also an elated delight, if I may elaborate and include. Absolute thanks for your friendliness and kindness throughout 2022. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I'm sorry if I may have shared a little too much information over flashbackable highlighting memories from 2022 before the 2023 proceedings as we are pretty much now in the 2023 proceedings now. You know, thanks all indeed for watching and I shall certainly see you in the next video. Here is to 2023 for some wonderful 2023 adventures. Ta-ta, another time. From Foxy. <laughs> uh.